Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new section of the course we are going to talk about Firebase Cloud Storage. So we are going to be adding file upload capabilities to our application, again without having to add a single line of server-side code for that. In this initial lesson of the section we are going to answer the question what is Firebase Storage and what are its key features. In order to add Firebase Storage to our application, let's head over to the terminal and run the command Firebase init. From here on this menu we are going to select the option Storage. Let's click on Enter to continue and choose here the name for our Storage Rules file. So as we will see, Firebase Storage also uses similar security rules to the Firestore database. Let's accept here the default storage rules name and with this we have now added Firebase Storage to our project. Let's now have a look at the changes introduced in the file system. So as we can see here on firebase.json we have a new storage section where we define the name of the storage rules file. Let's have a look at this new file that was generated. This new file contains here a default set of security rules just like we had before for Firestore security rules. These rules here do not target the Firestore database, instead they target Firebase storage. We are going to cover storage rules in detail later in this course. Right now we simply want to quickly review this default set of rules. And what this default set of rules is saying is that any user, as long as the user is authenticated, can both read any file that we have uploaded and it can also upload new files and rewrite existing files. So this is a good default set of permissions for a development environment. Again, we would not want to deploy this set of rules to production, this is for development purposes only. Let's then deploy this set of storage rules to production in order to be able to start using Firebase Storage. Let's head over here to the command line and let's run the command Firebase Deploy. This command is going to again deploy everything to production including our hosting files in the dist folder, the Firestore indexes, the Firestore database rules and this time around also the new storage rules. Now that we have installed the cloud storage rules, let's switch over to our database console, let's click here on the storage tab and see what options we have available. As we can see we have here a file explorer tree that looks very much like a local file system that we have installed in our development machine. So we can create here for example a folder, let's call it courses, and inside it we can create subfolders and add new files. We have here on this icon the complete path to this particular folder, which in the Firebase storage terminology is called a bucket. So a bucket is where we can upload our files. We also have here a button for uploading files. Let's try this out, we are going to upload an image that we have available here in our project. If you go to the root of your Firebase course project, you have here a folder called images. We have here a couple of images for the serverless Angular with Firebase course. One is a very large size image and the other is a reduced sized image with a play button in the middle. Let's try to upload this reduced sized image to Firebase storage. Switching back here to the console, let's click on upload file and select here the serverless angular image with a play button. So this is the smaller file. This should take a moment to upload, but after a while you are going to get here a new file available in your Firebase storage courses bucket. This file is now available to be used anywhere in our application. So let's open the file, let's click here on file location and we're going to see that we have here a couple of URLs linked to this file. We have here a storage location, so this is the full path to the Firebase storage bucket containing the file and we also have here a download URL. So this is an automatically generated URL that is going to allow us to access this image. If we click on this URL, we have copied the URL to the clipboard. Let's now open here another tab, paste the URL and we can see that indeed we can access the image as expected. 
Now, the great thing about this URL is that it can be revoked. So we can generate multiple download URLs to the same resource, but we can also revoke them and deny access to the resource to a given user that had created a given access URL, for example. So as you can see, this is a complete file upload solution. Uploading files via the console might come in handy from time to time, but in most cases, we are going to be uploading files via our front-end application using the Angular Fire API. So that's what we will be doing in the next couple of lessons. Before going any further, let's click here on the Courses folder and let's delete it so that we can start from a clean starting point. So now we have removed the Courses folder and we have here an empty root folder. Next to the Files tab, we also have here the Rules tab, where we can see here the rules that we have deployed using the Firebase Deploy command. So as we can see, any authenticated user should now be able to upload and get access to any file in any of our storage buckets. Now that we have a good overview of Firebase storage, let's add file upload capabilities to our application using Angular Fire.